What's up everybody, it's Rashad from Suave Magazine. We're here at the Indie Night Film Festival interviews at the Ritz Carlton in downtown Atlanta. Dave Brown and Morris Chestnut are inside. We're gonna do an interview with them and ask them some questions about the industry, how to get involved with it, how to deal with some of the rejection from it, and then find out what it is they want to bring the film festival to become. So, let's go. Welcome to another session of Suave Sessions. This is Rashad, I'm here with Dave Brown, the founder of the Indie Night Film Festival and the one and only Morris Chestnut as well. Um, the good thing for me is I got to sit in on all the other interviews, so I don't have any questions I have to ask you from that. Um, when, you, when you think about doing the film festival and the importance of it, that's where dreams are made true. That's where inspiration happens. Um, who pushed you and helped you get to your dream? Um, I, I think it was, you know, being in, um, at Morehouse, um, Dr. Eicherberger was my teacher who was, um, you know, and even I was at Morehouse, they didn't have a film department at Morehouse at the time. So we were able to cross register to Clark. Okay. And so we would, you know, take classes over there. So it's crazy. Spike Lee's teacher, my teacher was Dr. Eicherberger. Oh. And so he was one of those that told you, he says, yo, reach for it, go get it. If you want it, you got to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And so I was always, you know, we had to do short films before we graduated. And I, I looked at it as there were a lot of great short films there. But it's like, what do you do with them afterwards? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I said, that can be a driving force for each and every one to, to get to the next level. If you show these films right. and let people see them in Hollywood, and it, it opens the doors for you to where people say, oh, good, you, you know, because that's where it is. You gotta understand, we're going back to colleges now to look for the next actors, you know, look for the next directors, producers, and this is what we have to do. We gotta reach back and go grab them. So it was an inspiration, and my Dr. Eicherberger really taught me to go get it, you know? And then, you know, uh, when I was in college, I met this guy when I was in college, and, you know, as an actor, he was like, yo, what are you gonna do? He says, yo, I, said, I thought I was gonna go to New York. You know what I'm saying? He said, well, why would you go to New York? I said, well, yo, I'm, you know, in acting. You know, he says, well, what do you want to do? He says, I, I want to be on TV. I want to be on films. He said, well, you got to be that fish in the big pond. You got to come to L.A. You know, if you want to do theater, go to New York. But if you want to be this, you come to. And so he was my eyes and, and telling me the do's and don'ts. So it's like I, I have, I'm on, I'm, I'm always want to listen. I'm the guy that you uh, gets in a room. I, I'm, I'm not quick to talk. I like to sit and listen. And understand and understand how to be great because this is what it's all about in this business. Yeah, and when you get to like, especially this business, resilience is is everything. Um, like you guys said, there's a lot of no's. Yeah. Um, learning to understand that the no isn't about you; it's about not fitting that project that moment. Right. That's right. Um, so when you when you get that at some point in your career, how do you now relay that back out to someone else who's going to hit that but still feel like it's disappointment? It is me. It's not, you know. I just don't match up with this other co-actress or whatever like that. Well, yeah, I think it, it, it's a, when you go in for an audition, right? Um, it's not that you're not great. It's just that they don't see you to fit that, that role. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so you gotta go home and say, oh, it's all good. You know, what's the next one? Because it's always like this, when you do enough of audition and you audition and audition and audition, it's like you're gonna land something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had the blessing of casting films and stuff like that. And I, I look at it like this. I said, auditioning is like taking the SAT. Now, listen to what I'm about to say. Everybody goes, well, what do you mean? The SAT is what? It's a test that says if you can do college work, right? If you can go to college. Not everybody's a good test taker. Doesn't mean that when you get in college, you can't do the work. Okay. So now when I say I compare it to auditioning, not everybody's a good auditioner, but doesn't mean when I say action, you ain't going to rock the roll. Because the nervous, you know, you sit and you walk in a room, you see all these people sitting at a table, you know what I'm saying? And all these people are sitting there watching you and you get nervous, you know what I'm saying? But then when you're in a scene and you embedded in a scene, you're like, you, you ready to rock this role? When they say action, you rock it. So this is how you got to look at this business. It's like 
at the end of the day, work on the things you, to make you better. If you know that auditioning is one of your, it's not one of your strong points, go even harder on that to make you feel comfortable. Because I've seen a lot of people come in. And when I remember when I was casting films, I was like, I would see people come in and I go, they're nervous. I said, stop the camera, stop, stop, stop. What's wrong? It's okay. Shake it off. Yeah. Let's do it again. I'm not going to send this in. Yeah. I want you to be you. But most, some casting directors don't give you the opportunity to be you. It's the one time. Okay, thank you very much. But I want to see you bring it out. And so I think this is what it's all about, you know? Yeah. Um, Morris, for you, you have cult classics, cult. like plural. <laughs> when you when you get to that point, how important is your voice as an individual, um, making sure that you are putting something into the culture and then giving other people that, that same space to have a voice? I heard you're, you're like the most unselfish person with a camera. Yeah, I think it's very important because, you know, for me, it's, um, I've been very blessed in this industry um, to be part of, you know, films that have resonated, you know, 20, 30 years after we've done them and still to be able to revisit them. So I've been very blessed and fortunate. So I always like to pass that along to to the next person to and, and give opportunities. That's what part of being a part of Indie Night is about. Um, it's about giving filmmakers, actors, any type of creative an opportunity to have the exposure in Hollywood, to have a relationship with Dave Brown, whose name in Hollywood is gold. Um, he knows anybody from the top, directors, producers, uh, studio executives, managers, everybody in town, they can't get it. As a matter of fact, there was, uh, there was someone, that I, I called him like uh, three weeks ago, I said, hey, I need to get in such, it was such and such for this film. And matter of fact, we're gonna be working that deal out. We're working that deal out, so, so she's gonna do the movie. I called Dave for that. Um, and so it's just one of those things to where we all wanna just get back. How, how important is, relationships are everything in Hollywood? And not even just Hollywood and life period. Right. How important is learning that aspect as a creative? Because most creatives can tend to be like shell people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, how important is the building relationships aspect of being successful in this industry? It's, it's very important. Um, I tell people all the time, the only thing you own is your name. You know, that's the only thing you own is you gotta be very conscious of how you present yourself. And, and, and when you talk to people, understand this, it's like, you, you're not bigger than the game. Let me tell you, you're not bigger than the game. And I'm gonna say the game, you're not bigger than, you'll never be bigger than Hollywood. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hollywood would, is, is, a, is, is, you gotta respect the fact that, yo, you are in and God has given you an opportunity to become a part of Hollywood. And when you get there, you gotta keep your name in good standings, you know what I'm saying? And that's one thing I've always learned and I've learned it from him, you know, uh, that you go in there, treat everybody the same. It's treat everybody with respect. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, and even the people that rub you the wrong way, kill them with kindness, man. Because at the end of the day, yo, they're gonna come across your bridge again. But at the same time, don't even dirty. Don't let people let don't let people see that you you're bothered by it. You know what I'm saying? And that's what it's all about in Hollywood is is understanding that you have a brand. And you have to take your brand mm -hmm. and understand, keep your brand in shiny lights. Don't let people say that, yo, you you are bad or you are hard to work with. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm gonna tell you this: on a set, if they see you're that guy, uh, where's my, where's my, where, where's my coffee? Where's it? if you're that guy, people are not gonna want to work with you. And they tell the next director, and they go this: they ask, "How was it working with Morris? How was it working with Morris? These are directors do this. Producers, they said he was great, brilliant. And this is what you want to hear, and this is what gives you the opportunity to continue to work in Hollywood because you have that standing brand. And that's what it's all about. Yeah, to what he said, that's very much so. It's like they're always being about relationships and your, your name and your reputation. It always precedes you because when a studio is investing millions of dollars in a project, they want to make sure that they're hiring somebody that, that they can, they can, that is responsible, that they can trust. So they're always checking and they're always going to say, um, you know, they'll reach back to the person in the studio that did that, that just hired that person and say, hey, how were they on set? And your reputation precedes you. So my, my last question, as far as legacy for you guys, um, what do you want your, your legacy to be? I mean, cause you're both, you've built a lot thus far, but you have a lot of time left. Um, my legacy is this. Um, 
you know, I was just talking about the things. You know, I, I think the last interview they said uh, if I was to, what I would know, uh, a book. I said I'm Hollywood's best friend, and I will. I, I always continue and love to connect people, to see everybody grow and become what you want, bring the full potential out of any individual. You know what I'm saying? If I see talent, I'm gonna grab hold of it and say, Hey, I think you should be doing da 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 da. You know what I'm saying? But I wanna. I always wanna see people win, and that's me. My thing is, is I have no jealous bone in my body at all. Period. I'm not a jealous guy. I want to see you win. I want to see you make it. I'm going to, you know, if I can put you up here and stand higher than me, it's cool. You know what I'm saying? And even if you don't reach back down and say thank you, it's okay. It's okay because I believe this. You know, you give out and you put out, it's going to come back to you in full folds, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, my, 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 my legacy is just not, it's not over yet. I mean, I'm still, I still have a lot that I want to project. A couple of projects that I'm doing, you know, behind the scenes and producing. And even in terms of uh, on screen, there's a couple of things that I want to do. So I don't really have a title for it yet or know what it is. I just uh, just know it's, it's in progress. It's work in progress. Mm -hmm.